Welcome and thanks for clicking on my video. I really appreciate you taking this time out of your day to watch this. If you're not a current subscriber, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Hit that like button because you're gonna like this video and also hit the notification bell so you'll be notified the next time I create a video. Today, we're gonna to talk about the trading platform Stockpile. Now in a previous video where I talked about the best accounts for beginners, I mentioned Stockpile as one of those accounts. So if you haven't seen that video, make sure you check that one out. But today what I want to do is review Stockpile because it wasn't a platform that I had used at the time, but there was a feature that I really liked and that's why I included it in that video. So let's go ahead and dive into the pros and cons of the Stockpile trading app. The major benefit to me with the Stockpile app is that it makes it really user friendly for younger kids. So if you want to get your children into investing and you want an app that they'll actually be able to use and it's really simple, this is one of the best apps for that. So if you want to get your kids into investing, what you can do is create a custodial account. And then you can also create a separate login for your child. So your child would be able to actually log into the Stockpile app. They can actually look up the stocks that they want to purchase. And once they select the stock that they want to purchase, it will then send an approval email to you as the parent. And then you can approve whether or not you allow that purchase to happen. So this is a great feature because one, it gets kids interested in investing at a very young age, but it also has the training wheels on it. So they're not in there and just, you know, spending their money all willy nilly and buying up either too much, using too much money or buying stocks that, you know, maybe you don't approve of them buying. They also have some great educational tools, some really simple videos to help people learn about how the stock market works and how to make trades and things of that nature. So that's another feature that makes it really great for young kids. So now let's get into evaluating Stockpile as just a general trading app for anyone, whether you're a kid or an adult. One of the best features of Stockpile is the fact that you can purchase fractional shares. So if you're looking to get in investing and you're just starting, especially if you're just starting, or even if you just want to make sure that 100% of the money that you are putting into the stock market is actually going into the stocks that you want to purchase. So if you're looking to get into a stock like Apple, which is around $200, or maybe even an Amazon that's around $1,900 at this point, if you only have $100 to invest, let's say every two weeks or maybe once a month, then that will limit you to the actual stocks that you can put your money in. If you were trading on one of the big trading companies like TD Ameritrade or E-Trade or a Schwab or a Fidelity or a company like that. So with Stockpile, you can put that $100 into a stock like Amazon and you can purchase a fractional share, also known as a partial share. So you don't have to actually buy the full share and with a stock like Amazon, that would be $1,900. And you know most people aren't able to afford that every month or every pay period. But with buying fractional shares, every time you have the chance, you can put as little as $5 into the stock market or into the an individual stock or ETF that you choose to purchase. Now, the feature that stood out the most to me when I made the video about the best beginner trading apps was the fact that you can purchase gift cards. So if a birthday is coming around or Christmas or some other holiday, you can purchase gift cards of stock. So you can either go online to Stockpile's website or you can go through the app or you can go to a local big box store like maybe a Walmart or a Target. And if you go to their gift card section, they should have Stockpile gift cards. So if you wanted to give your son or daughter or maybe a friend or a family member actual stock or a gift card towards purchasing a stock, you can go out and you can give them a piece of Amazon or Apple or, you know, whatever company you think they may be interested in. So instead of, let's say, purchasing some Nike shoes for Christmas, you could give someone the gift of Nike stock, something that's going to be worth more five, 10 years from now versus some shoes that'll probably be beat up within the next year or two, you know, depending on how you take care of your shoes. Another great feature is the fact that there are no monthly fees to be within this platform. There is no minimum balance. So you can literally just start with $5, putting that into the stock market. Now, another feature, which I haven't seen since uh, an older platform called Loyal3 that was bought out by another company, 
is the fact that you can actually purchase stock with a credit or debit card. So not only can you do your normal ACH bank transfers to put money into your account, but you can actually use your debit card or your credit card. And that could allow you to, you know, either get cash back rewards or maybe travel rewards by using your credit card to purchase the stock. Now I wouldn't recommend this for anyone that's in credit card debt. And I wouldn't want someone to purchase more stock with their credit card than they would be able to with their regular bank account just because they have that ability. You wanna make sure you actually have the money to purchase it. And then that's when you get the true benefit with whatever rewards you have with your credit card. With that said, that now leads me to the cons of this stockpile trading app. And sticking with the credit cards, there is a 3% fee if you were to use a credit or debit card. So you'd have to look at what the benefit is with maybe your cashback card. If you're only getting 1%, you know, maybe paying 3% to get in the stock isn't that great. But maybe if you have travel rewards, that the benefit of getting the travel reward is greater than the 3% fee, then this may be a worthwhile transaction to use your credit card to purchase the stock. And you wanna make sure you pay that off immediately from your bank account. That way you can make sure that you don't incur any interest fees, which kind of negates any of the benefit that you would receive by getting cash back or some travel rewards. In addition to the fee for using a credit or a debit card account, just with any regular trade, there is a 99 cent trading fee. So whether you're purchasing with a credit card, a debit card, or a, a bank transfer, Either way, there is a 99 cent fee for every trade that you make in the account. Now you may be looking at 99 cents like, oh wow, that's great. You know, companies like TD Ameritrade or E-Trade or other brokerage accounts, they actually may charge anywhere from 495 up to 999 for, per trade. So when comparing to those brokerage accounts, this is actually pretty good. But nowadays there are lots of apps where you can actually trade for free. Uh, M1 Finance, which is one of my favorite applications to use, Robinhood, SoFi Money. With all of those platforms, you can actually trade for free. So while 99 cents isn't a lot when you compare it to the average brokerage account, there are free options out there for you. Another con with this platform is the fact that they use batch trading. Now with batch trading, what that means is that everyone that's purchasing an individual stock or an ETF, they combine all of that money together. This is normally what companies do if they offer the option to buy fractional shares. So you have maybe a hundred people buying uh, $10 worth of Apple stock. And then you have another hundred people buying $50 worth of Apple stock. They combine all of that money together and then they make one trade per day, or they may make two trades. They may make one uh, early in the morning and they may make one in the evening time, but they combine all of the funds to purchase those stocks and they make that one or two purchases per day. So that means that you can't pick the time or the price that you're actually gonna get into the stock. So for some people that's a con, but also if you're investing for the long term, you don't really care that, you know, this week you wanna get this exact price because over time you're gonna get the dollar cost averaging just by investing in the market consistently. So on a day-to-day -day trading basis, if you're investing for the long term, this doesn't actually matter. So as far as some general features of the Stockpile app, you can go on their website and trade. They have a trading app that works on Android and iPhone. And I forgot to mention earlier in the video, as far as using a credit card to purchase stock, if you have an iPhone, you can actually use Apple Pay as well. I don't see any mention of Android Pay or Samsung Pay on their website, but maybe that's something that they're working on for the future. So within the app, they also have a growth calculator. So you can actually use this feature to see how much your money can grow over the next one, five year or 10 year period. So based on putting $50 a month or $25 a month, however much you can afford to consistently put into the market every month, you can use that amount. Plus they have a little slider where you can actually check the percentage gain that you think that you'll be able to average over that time period. And then they can let you know how much money you'll have after a year, five years or 10 years. So this is a really great feature for, especially if someone's a kid and they just want to go on the app and just guesstimate, okay, if I'm able to consistently put in $50 a month, you know, I'm going to have $10,000 over a 10 year period. 
All right, guys, thanks for taking the time to watch this video. I hope this review of Stockpile was helpful. Uh, let me know in the comments if this is an application that you use or that maybe you plan on using after learning the features of this app. Uh, again, thanks for watching the video. If you're not a current subscriber, make sure you hit that subscribe button down below. Hit that like button because you really like this video and also hit the notification bell so you'll be notified the next time I create a video. And you have a great day. Thanks.